Clash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. Welcome to the video, guys. Today, the top 10 best and worst cards to upgrade for mid ladder. So what is mid ladder? Let's define that before we jump into the cards. It's going to be outside of the arenas, so the leagues, so into the league area. So above right now around 5,000 trophies, all the way up until the top 10,000. Obviously, that does fluctuate, but that's what I consider to be mid ladder. So Got that out of the way. There's obviously going to be a lot of cards such as Wizard and Mega Knight that we talk about today that pro players will scoff at and say that card is trash. However, it can be extremely advantageous when playing it if your opponent might not be the best player in the history of the world as well. And they might have the propensity to cluster their troops together uh, or have bad timing on their defensive troop placement. So with all that out of the way, let's start with the best. Let's start with the the best cards to upgrade for a ladder and i want to start by the way guys i went no legendaries on this list uh mostly every legendary is worth upgrading i would say in this game so if you have one you kind of know intuitively when and where to invest in legendary cards so let's start out with one of my favorite cards in the game it is the zappies guys so zappies are so freaking good at stopping tanks can be spell bait as well and i love upgrading zappies because they're just great they have the stun lock mechanic they deal a decent amount of damage as well uh really really robust defensive card which i feel like any player can benefit from another card right next door to it guys is going to be the flying machine the flying machine is one of the most annoying and difficult cards to actually deal with i've seen so many players out there don't pretend that you haven't done it you haven't whiffed a fireball against a flying machine you got to aim for the shadow man uh but either way i think the flying machine is sneakily one of the better cards out there inside the entire game next is going to be the Dark Prince. The Dark Prince is tremendous. I love Dark Prince, especially in mid ladder. This dude can stop, can, can give you an answer to all the swarm out there. Plus he can take a hit or two thanks to the shield that he has as well. So I think the Dark Prince is always a good investment. Even when he's not super, super meta, you can still play Dark Prince and get tremendous value from the card. Next up is going to be, of course, the Valkyrie. Valkyrie right now on, on ladder, is in 25% of decks. That's insane. A 50% uh, uh, win rate, but when she's being used in one quarter of every match in the game, that's saying something. I think Valkyrie is a tremendous card. She is the tank that I use in my deck that I run, Graveyard. Uh, I love Valkyrie. She's so versatile. She has so much damage, and she's tanky. She has so much HP as well. Don't nerf Valkyrie, please. Supercell. I, uh, I love my Valkyrie, but maybe some of you guys disagree with me. Next card is going to be the... Where are you where are you where are you cannon cart there you are cannon cart is another one of those really really underrated cards maybe less so more recently i feel like people are on to how good the cannon cart is has kind of that spell resiliency and the fact that it has a second life as a, a cannon after you uh lightning or whatever the uh, the the car itself does a lot of damage i think that sneaky nerf slash aka really a buff when they made it move slower actually helped the card out a lot a great card to upgrade can really decimate your opponent with a cannon in cart let's talk about him guys i mentioned him at the top of the video it is the mega knight dude i don't care what anybody says i don't care what any pro says man mega knight on mid ladder He's an amazing card. He's an amazing card. You hate going against him, but you love when you play him. So much value, so much opportunity for value when you're rocking the Mega Knight. The enter the arena ability is really just... It's OP, man. I mean, it's not OP. It's not doesn't need another nerf, don't get me wrong. But it's so freaking effective to just shut down any swarm push coming your way. So Mega Knight definitely is a card. Hey, you know what? I just said no legendaries and I included a legendary. I'm ruining my old video, uh, my own video. You know what I'm gonna do, guys? I'm gonna pick a substitute, but I will, this is right here. I'll cover the mini P.E.K.K.A. too. Mini P.E.K.K.A., fantastic card to upgrade. And this one you actually can. He's not a legendary, ladies and gentlemen. We're learning this breaking news here on the channel. He's not a legendary card, but sometimes the little fella eating his pancakes this is his season to shine right now too. He feels like a freaking legendary card, guys. Uh, mini P.E.K.K.A. just a tank stopper. Can be a threat at the bridge. Four licks are the perfect cost. I really, really love Mini Pack. I think you can benefit 
almost everybody out there. Okay, next up is going to be, I still stand by the Mega Knight, but he is the only legendary on the list, so whatever. Dark Goblin, man. Another machine gun Dark Goblin. This guy is so annoying to deal with. I like him much better than the Firecracker. Right now, personally, I like him better than the Princess inside this meta. He shoots so fast. He's a threat at the bridge as well. You have to think really quick to intercept that Dark Goblin when he's placed at the bridge. Uh, overall, though, mostly you're just using him on defense, parlaying that into an offensive push. A fantastic card to upgrade as well. Hey, maybe if you go against those lower level logs or whatever, they're whiffing against the uh, the Dark Goblin and you get to keep the little fella alive a little bit longer. Uh, next up is going to be uh, the card that we, another, another card that we mentioned at the top of the video, guys. It is the Wizard. So yeah, man, Wizard is a card that, similar to Witch, I could have easily put Witch and Wizard as a tie. Maybe I will, right? But these are cards that got a lot of hate as being a no-skill, brainless card for a long time. And you can argue, just like the Mega Knight, a little bit, that is the case. However, the Wizard is pretty solid in mid-ladder, guys. I mean, he does a lot of damage. His radius is pretty solid. He can really just evaporate a whole area of the arena of any signs of life from the opponent's swarm troops. So I think the Wizard is actually worth going after. I mean, look at him shut down those, uh, those piggies on the uh, preview, man. I mean, you can get a lot of value out of the Wizard in almost any single deck. He is a little pricey at 5 Elixir, but I still think he's a card worth upgrading for most mid-ladder players. A card that pros never play, but a very, very solid support card. Uh, or as I say, uh, the range card for everybody else out there. Okay, we have one more, and I'm going to be super cheesy, guys. And I'm going to say... It's like an eight-way tie. <laughs> every spell, okay? I wasn't going to just list every spell in the game. However, cards like Zap, cards like Barbarian Barrel, Log, Arrows, Fireball, Poison, Lightning, those cards probably should be your first priority when it comes to upgrading cards for Ladder and Clash Royale. You don't want to get stuck with an under-leveled spell. You want to have an over-leveled spell so you can one-shot that opposing three Musketeer or one Musketeer tier right so over leveling your spells uh you know upgrading your spells first is definitely the route that i recommend for all of you guys all right now let's we're, we'll move on to the worst 10 cards to upgrade this is going to be a mix of really bad cards and really good cards that you just don't have to upgrade right away okay so let's start with the really bad cards guys and let's probably go with one of the worst cards out there unless you're an incredibly skilled player you probably shouldn't be upgrading your elixir golem man i mean this dude just gives your opponent more and more and more elixir ah oh, man just stay away stay away there's a reason this dude's win percentage is is hovering in the high 20s that's awful that's awful one of the worst cards in the game the elixir golem and I, I let's keep it that way let's keep it that way personally there's a few players who have success with him and there'll be a few players who have success with any card and every deck inside the game so sure you can have some fun i mean that's what the game's all about at the end of the day however i would uh i would be advised stay away stay away next up is going to be the barbarian hut the worst of all the spawners in the game barbarian hut just does not give you the value back for seven elixir it is a costly investment rarely get that much value uh, again back that seven elixir worth of value uh sure it spawns death barbarians now yay really it's it's not a good card i would not invest frankly in really any spawner well i guess furnace you could upgrade furnace makes sense so the fire spirit can get to the tower uh but really you know i'm not even a massive fan of goblin hut and tombstone i don't have it on the list but i might as well because you really don't have to prioritize upgrading your tombstone that much right skeletons are going to get one shot by anything anyway they're there mainly just to distract slower units such as the pecker prince etc uh or to you know pull a troop but for that reason we do have the other skeleton cards on the list skeleton army in skeletons right so two for one right now guys i would pass on all of these skeleton cards not that i would never upgrade them because we like the extra dps that comes from those larry's however i really strongly believe that you should prioritize other cards because again like we just talked about with the tombstone skarmy and skeletons you can wait on upgrading them right put your gold into other cards that you need more like spells like we just uh, spoke about so for that reason skeletons even though one of the most powerful cards in my estimation in the game i still think you can just kind of hold off on those cards speaking of really really good cards my personal favorite card in the entire game i think is the strongest card it's one of the most dynamic inside the entire game 
game, but you don't have to upgrade it. It's a beautiful thing about Tornado, guys. Tornado, all you're getting when you upgrade it is a little bit extra damage. Who cares, man? I mean, obviously it's nice to have, but really the radius is gonna be the same, the duration's gonna be the same, and the pull power, so to speak, of the tornado is gonna be the same regardless. So definitely hold off on tornado as well. Uh, other spells that I would not prioritize upgrading is the freeze spell. The freeze spell radius is always gonna be three. The duration's always gonna be four seconds. So you're just upgrading it for area damage and crown tower damage which isn't that much, it's negligible. So again, hold off on freeze. You can still use it with the three radius and the four second. That's what. That's the most important part of these spells, right? Same thing with the rage. Talk about some more bad cards in just a moment here, but let's get all of these out of the way. Rage, same thing, man, look at this. The duration changes, but the boost percentage plus 35% in the radius stays the same. So sure, having a longer rage is definitely great. And if this was a free spell with a shorter duration, uh, I would definitely take it off the list. However, with a rage spell, usually it's going to work or it's not going to work. And usually it's going to be within five seconds, you know? So you don't have to worry about having your rage spell, if you are a rage user out there, necessarily be the highest level or the highest priority of a card to upgrade in your deck. Next up is going to be, guys, it is, we talked about the Elixir Golem. I am just not a fan right now of the Battle Healer. Uh, Battle Healer, we talked about how tanky, you know, the Valkyrie is, for example. Uh, even the Knight, I'd rather use those cards over the Battle Healer. The Battle Healer only really utilized in one meta deck right now. It's barely even meta, and it's the Elixir Golem deck that we spoke about earlier. She's not the worst card in the game. You can have some, you know, I mean, she heals. She's unique, right? You can have some sort of, uh, I don't know, semblance of success with a battle healer. However, she's just not my favorite. There's so many better, tankier options, and that heal is really hit or miss. Everybody knows how to deal with the battle healer. I personally think she needs to be reworked. Let me know if you agree or disagree with that. Next up, guys, is going to be, I hate to say it, I got nothing against the little green dudes. But that's right, it's the goblins, man. Goblins! If you're running goblins, I would ask you, what did guards ever do to you? <laughs> you know, guards for one more elixir are so much better. They still got great DPS. They have the shield on them, so they're more resilient to spells, uh, except for arrows. Or you could even run goblin. I'd rather run goblin gang than goblins right now, or spear goblins. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, I'm allergic to, to goblin talk, apparently. I just... I just don't think that, what did they do? They changed the spacing of the goblins a little bit or something like that. Uh, I think they need another buff, but it's hard to buff a card that is also in other cards, such as, the, again, the Goblin Gang. So I don't know what to do about goblins. I just think that you're better off using guards, you know, in the game overall. So I don't really know any deck right now that is running goblins as its choice for one of those, you know, cheaper kind of DPS swarmy units out there. Speaking of swarmy units, guys, I am not a fan of, even though it did have a little bit of time in the sun last meta, it dipped way down again to where it belongs. But it's a minion horde, man. Minion horde, sure, it can get you value. Similar to like barbarians, right? It can get you value if you put it directly on the troop and they don't have a good response. But almost every deck, almost every player is carrying multiple spells. And splash units are everywhere in the game right now, especially on mid ladder. If you're running minion horde on mid ladder, you're going to be running into wizard and witch and wizard and witch, and more wizard, and, and did I mention more wizard, and more witch. It's not going to work out for you. I would not prioritize upgrading Minion Horde. There's so many better common cards to actually go out there and upgrade right now that this would really be on the bottom of my list. So that's it, guys. Barb, Elixir Golem, Battle Healer, Minion Horde, Goblins, Tornado, Skeleton, Skarmy, Rage, and Freeze on the Do Not Upgrade list. Do you agree or do you disagree with my top 10 cards in both category? I know I kind of cheated by including a bunch of spells in the To Upgrade category, but I think these kind of conversations conversations are valuable to have because it shows us the difference between maybe pros at the top 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 ladder and everybody else in terms of even what we're facing in the arena in terms of decks and other troop choices that players tend to go with more popular uh, troop choices maybe even elite barbarians could be added to the list anyway guys let me know in the comments below open to your feedback as always let me know if you enjoyed the video thank you so much for watching big shout out to stats royale and to brent shaw my youtube partners check out their information as well thank you for watching and as always take care guys Thank you.